So maybe you have the most awesome phasic position in front stance. Or even better, you have a horse stance that just helps you to deliver the most perfect kick. Or maybe you have a back stance that just seems to move with fluidity and speed like nobody's business. Well, I have bad news for you. They're all the same stance. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it. Welcome to Shihan's Dojo. I'm Shihan Marty Husband and I'm here today to help you build your skills and knowledge in the martial arts. Or, if you're wanting to learn the martial arts, maybe learn a bit more about it. So if you're here for the first time, jab that subscribe button and punch that bell so we can notify you when we have a new video coming out. The question's simple today. What's your favorite stance to use in your martial arts style? Let us know in the comments. Tell us how you use it and why you like it. And maybe we can get a big conversation going. No matter what style you're in, karate, kung fu, an eclectic style for your MMA or Jeet Kune Do. One of the things you have to understand is your stance. The stance can vary through many different systems and styles on how they're done. Some will go long, some will go short. It's just dependent what's going on at the time, whether you're doing kata or free sparring. But some of the common stances we all use can vary in range from different styles and that there. But no matter how you look at it, they're all basically the same when it comes to those three. We'll talk about a few others in here, but I just wanted to kind of let you see some similarities and how they actually are the same. In my early days when I was first training, I hated the back stance. And I did like the front stance because it reminded me of my boxing days and allowed me a lot of extra mobility. As for the horse stance, I just thought it was some grueling exercise that they made us do and, and try to build our legs up with. It was really annoying. It really wasn't until years later when I was studying proof of stance that then I began to realize the important connection between these three stances. In this following video, this does go along well with the proof of stance video I, that I put out some months back. And I felt this applied somewhat to the technique studies we've been trying to accomplish over the past few weeks. But this isn't going to be as detailed of a study as normal. It's just the basic kinematics and dynamics of the stances themselves and a few other stances we'll talk about. As you can see here, I'm basically going through the horse stance, checking out the different positions of my knees to make sure everything is correct. The position of the horse stance can be dependent on what you're trying to do in, in your martial arts, whether you're trying to do it deep as an exercise or get ready to use it like for kicking in Taekwondo. For whatever purpose you're doing it, there are basic dynamics that should be understood about a horse stance. First of all, the feet should always be straight ahead from where the body's put pointing. Now, as you can see, I did one there a second ago where the feet are at 45 degree angles out. That's called a sumo stance. It's very effective for a lot of different things. But for now, we're going to stick with a basic horse stance. Now, in understanding the good basic position that you need on a horse stance, the knees have to torque outwards and trying to get above basically the big toe. Your upper body needs to come down to your phasic position level. The hips need to be tucked so they're in line basically with the ankles and your head straight above down the center. Now, going from a back stance into a front stance is really simple. Pivoting on your heels and turning both your feet at a 45 degree angle, then shifting your weight forward and changing changing the knee position so it's in a good phasic position over the front knee. This usually distributes the weight about 70, 30, 60, 40, again, dependent on your style and what you're trying to accomplish. The same thing applies here with the back stance. What I'm showing you here in the back stance, it's really easy to say, but hard to do. When you're doing a proper back stance, that rear knee should be almost over that back foot, right over the big toe knee if you can get it there. Now, not everybody can do it. And if you're looking for sport, your hip has to be in line with your ankle. So, but that's a different thing and that's just for sport at this time. A lot of people miss the fact that their knees have to torque outwards just like the horse stance did and that front knee and front foot and body should be pointing straight ahead. Now you can move the hips as I'm showing here a little bit in like at a 45 degree angle or you can straighten them out depending on again how your technique's being used if you're blocking or, or striking. When you're first practicing the back stance it may not feel comfortable because you're not used to using those particular muscles. So one has to be aware of any pain or discomfort and make sure you try to alleviate it somehow and order not to hurt yourself. There's always a lot of controversy about the purpose of a back stance and, and it really is a big subject but it is one of my favorite techniques today that I use quite a lot when I'm doing a self-defense practice. The other stances as well as that helps you learn to get into the oblique by simply just changing your feet position and shifting your weight. That's why these are truly the same technique because the feet position does not have to move. Now of course we need mobility in self-defense. We would be crazy just to stand there and let somebody hit us. The next part here, I'm basically trying to show 
show you how to use the proof of stance and going slow to do it. And showing you, you also have to understand that cat stance is a part of these too. Now I'm also showing you something here that's real difficult with the front leg front kick that I use a lot and showed I think in proof of stance. This drill I'm showing you here is basically what we use to try not to change our height. Now mind you, it's almost impossible not to change your height at some point, but it has to be so minute that it's hard to pick up. But I want you to be aware this is an excellent drill for teaching you how to get your balance. And now, if you have bad knees, be very careful. I have to wear knee braces when I'm doing this because I've hurt my knees over the years and believe it or not, it wasn't in karate. Your proof of stance does not have to necessarily be as low as someone else's. So if you want to know more about proof of stance, watch the video I have up here and you can go see what we talked about on that and try to apply it to your stance if you go there. Other scientific principles in that that we could put into is basically body dropping and locking with your abs and all of that, or basically understanding the position of the hara that is used in the martial arts. The hip actions of these stances can vary dependent on what you're trying to accomplish or just the relative position of your body and the hips when you're using them. So the next time you're examining your techniques, examine your stances also. Go back to the root of what that stance is doing. Like the cat stance, a lot of people don't really go through and try to figure out their dynamics of it. But if you do these stances properly, they translate into your jujitsu very easily in, for takedowns and many other things that apply to it. The mobility factors that you will get for understanding this are, are astronomical. They will make you better, quicker, and faster, and actually stronger if you follow the ideas of the proof of stance with your stances. This is good for leg strength and any techniques you might try to learn. I try to apply these principles in the quad that we've talked about before too. This helps a lot in making sure that you can get primary physics factors in or the techniques that are comfortable for you to do, whether it's a self-defense situation or sport. So next time in examining your own techniques for your style, find the root of the stances and train those stances from that root. It will help you develop good leg strength and, and give you an understanding of what your positioning should be in using it for either sport or self-defense. You also have to recognize the fact of distance in these stances too. So when you're studying your stances, make sure you understand how it affects the distance of closing in on your opponent, going on the oblique, or going into a reflexive to the side. Now, if you do use long, deep stances, remember, don't use them in a self-defense situation like that. First of all, it lets the people know that you know something. And second of all, it can slow you down in the street because of unknown objects or whatever. Later in the future, we'll hopefully try to cover some of these stances and how to use them when the, with movement and, and understanding the different angles with that particular stance and the techniques that are viable for each of these stances. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of these stances today. There are many other stances we didn't cover, but the similarities of these three needed to be addressed before we could go on with the other things I want to show you later on. I hope this has been some help for you today, but I wanted to give you this information because it could be useful to you and for future videos that I have planned. So if you liked it, click that like button and share it with your friends so we can help build Chihan's dojo. Give me ideas down there in the comments of what you'd like to see or questions you might have to ask. I'll try to get to them if I can. And don't forget the question of the day. What stances do you prefer to use when you're using it for self-defense or sport? Let us know in the comments down there too. And we hope to see you again here on Shihan's Dojo.